the East. But right now, we're going to switch the audience to the Midwest, to Dayton, where Ohio State, the one seed in the Midwest, goes against Georgia Tech. James Brown and Bill Raftery will be your announcers today from the Midwest. All right, Jimmy, thank you very much, and welcome to Dayton, Ohio, where today on tap the top seed in the Midwest, the Ohio State Buckeyes are hosting the number eight seed, the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. Ohio State got by a scrappy Towson State squad. Georgia Tech with no problems, winning by 17 over DePaul. Coming up later today, it'll be Texas and St. John's. And good afternoon, everyone. I'm James Brown, along with Bill Raftery. And Bill, today's game ought to be an interesting chess match. Ohio State with size, strength, depth, to go along with a suffocating four-court trapping defense. Georgia Tech, on the other hand, has a little bit of size, but what it has most of is an outstanding backcourt headed by All-America Kenny Anderson. Can Georgia Tech handle that stifling defense of uh, Ohio well, State? We see presses all over the country, but this one in particular is the size, the physical presence. We'll take a look at some tape now, and you'll see denying the inbounds pass, Craig Lee, six foot nine, then taking away the passing lane, six foot six, Chris Jett, and of course, Jimmy Jackson. Once the ball is inbounded, it's the size and strength as they trap in the corner and the anticipation of Christian to step in to the passing lane. But it's a game of speed as well, as Mark Baker anticipates, reads, as Jen takes away the one return pass, the second one played by the foreman in the back with some speed and the ability to finish it off. All right, well, not only are the players fired up, you're just as fired up as the players I are. I love the press. All right, let's get set to talk about the starting lineups for today, then. It really ought to be an interesting matchup between Kenny Anderson and Mark Brown, who's going to have the defensive responsibility. Well, Kenny Anderson's the kind of a kid that can control the game. His teammates are happiest when he runs the club and gives out the assist. His eyes, the last few days, have been that of a rested, comfortable individual. The enthusiasm has returned to Kenny right. Anderson. Well, enthusiasm is certainly going to be the operative word also for Ohio State as Mark Brown will be saddled with the responsibility of trying to guard Kenny Anderson, make that Jamal Brown. And on the other side of the coin, Brian Hill for Georgia Tech will be trying to check the Big Ten player of the year, Jim Jackson, so he's got a responsibility. The officials for today's contest, Gerald Donaghy is the referee from Haverton, Pennsylvania, Tom O'Neill from Tenley Park, Illinois, and Phil Bova of Westlake, Ohio. A decidedly Ohio State Buckeyes crowd on hand, 13,500 strong here at the University of Dayton Arena. Second-year coach at Ohio State looking on as Matt Geiger and Treg Lee go up for the jump. And it's controlled by Tech. This is John Barry. And Barry starting off quickly with two. He had 20 the other night to go along with 31 by Kenny Anderson. 2-3 zone. They'll try and match, JB. Some question as to whether Tech would start off with the zone or man. Mm -hmm. They thought that they would have nothing to go to if they started in zone. We'll find out. This is Treg Lee, who did not start on Friday night. Jackson. Blocked by Malcolm Mackey. Recovered by Ohio State. This is Jamal Brown with Mark Baker in the backcourt. They have to look for Jackson for the corner jumpers. Perry Carter losing the handle on the ball, but foul. Looks like Brian Hill, number 11 for Georgia Tech. And Hill, a fine defender, again, with the big responsibility of guarding Jim Jackson. And on the out of bounds, they'll look to get him a shot. He uses the post. Carter, big and strong on the inside, powers his way. Rebounded by Brown. So Ohio State getting the loose balls in early going off the offensive glass. And the zone should help Tech rebound. It has not. They got Jackson. Uh, excuse me, Anderson on the reach-in. I thought they were going to give it. No, as a matter of fact, they did. Okay. It looks like they did foul, uh, get a foul to Jim Jackson. Is well, they, uh, they have fouls that are accidental. They're so big and strong, they're weight fouls. They bump and people move. First time in the press. Tech handled well. 
Tech's very confident going against this Ohio State press. They faced it against Duke all season. Guy rebounded by Carter. Jackson for three. Hill loses the handle. Double clutching move, and Brown can't find the mark. Frenetic pace really favoring Ohio State as Jamal Brown tags from the rear. And that's the first personal on Jamal Brown, team second for Ohio State. We heard Billy Packer talk about Georgia Tech not being very deep at the bench, so I would assume the frenetic pace does not favor the Yellow Jackets. Well, they'll keep Kenny Anderson on the floor 39 minutes, 40 if possible, but that's what he's averaging for the year. They have to be patient on offense, and their dilemma, if they hold it long, Ohio State has the ability to steal the basketball. Barry for three. This is the pace the Buckeyes like. Craig Lee. <laughs> Three on two. Barry to Anderson. And there's Kenny Anderson's first basket of the afternoon. Well, that ought to make Kenny happy. He's usually the one dishing to Barry. They will take the cheap ones when the opportunity presents itself. Makes for a happy backcourt. It's for the, well, early on. Oh! Baker can penetrate. Jackson. Hill with the rebound. Kenny with the head up. They've got to get something out of their inside people, Mackey and Geiger, if they're going to win. Anderson, big night against the ball, 31 points. And Hill, not looking the ball in, turns it over. Roll the post down and through. Nice walk. Jackson. Finally, Ohio State scores at the 17-03 mark. It's a 4-2 Tech lead. Find the holes. Let's see how Tech handles the press. Here's the trap. Use the big guy to defuse. Mm -hmm. Anderson. Good. Followed by Mackey. Good heads up play. Both Geiger and Mackey sprinted the floor. Baker getting by Hill and Hill with the personal foul. Number two on Brian Hill. That Georgia first Tech Hill, foul, the, the guy they Brian need Hill. to open things and up as well as Barry against second. Ohio State. And again, Hill normally takes the top defensive scoring frontcourt player forward to the opponents. And he can also shoot the outside shot. Carter. Great slip pass. Jimmy Jackson is gorgeous to watch. Unselfish finds his partner's good slip passer. Almost unselfish to a fault. Uh, absolutely. And Randy said he'd love him to shoot more often, but he plays within the system. So air is content. Into Malcolm Mackey, the most improved player on the tech squad. Barry for three. Uh, everybody talks about his dad, but his grandfather, Bruce Hill, recruited me. Of course, his mom, a basketball family all her life. And, of course, John Barry's father, Rick Barry, the former pro. Jim Jackson, on court. Speaking of future pros, he can drill it. They've got to tag him, get up on him. Five for Jim Jackson, a two-point tech lead. 15-40 left in the first half. Straight up man-to-man. -man. And Bobby Crimmins has used the big guy in the trap in the corner to beat the pressure. Geiger, anything from him is a plus, and he gave it to him right there. Ooh, and you're tough on him. Geiger. His teammates are tougher than we are. <laughs> but he averages just shy of 12 points a game. He's not shy himself. Mm -hmm. Defense! Defense! Nice. Ah, good look. Carter's hands weren't up. And I guess from a coaching standpoint, you want the big guys to always have their hands ready. All those muscles get in the way. <laughs> You're not prepared. Cold filtered Miller G. 
genuine draft. For those who discovered its real draft taste, the world is a very cool place. Dean Witter believed in priorities. Know why your clients are saving. Know why they're investing. Okay, come on, folks. At some point, it's college. Later on, retirement. But Dean Witter knows that often the highest priorities are all the things that happen in between. Is there anything else you want? Just the first dance. There are many ways to measure success. We measure success one investor at a time. Every display precisely detailed. Every control thoughtfully placed. Every texture carefully crafted. Every aspect of the Bonneville SSE's spacious interior is designed for a single purpose, to place you in a position of power and control. The 1991 Bonneville SSE, full-size driving excitement from Pontiac. It's a major reunion. Have we met before? When Simon and Simon's Jameson Parker catches up with Gerald McCraney. You're a Marine. That's right. Great way to disguise hair loss. Made to Dad, Monday. James Brown, you have your best passer take it out, and John Barry, and then you have a, a clear route with the guard people so you can enable the big guy to step up, and all of a sudden, Geiger can see over the trap. They've diffused the pressure. They can kick it back to Barry, who's a good ball handler, and you've got Kay Anderson, who could even make me a good coach to bring it up. And another key ball handler breaking the press will be Brian Demolik, who's into the game now, replacing Brian Hill. Hill with two personal fouls. And the Buddies team it up outside. Mackey. Anderson played by Jackson as they get some help low. Mackey was awfully quiet on the bus ride over here. Brown misses the three. Geiger with the rebound. And to finish up on that, the coaching staff said whenever Geiger's quiet, make that Mackey. When he's quiet, they expect a big game. And Geiger, unfortunately, the last guy down fouled Jim Jackson. Uh, they tease him. He's going to be a good basketball player next year. Unfortunately, when kids transfer, he's in from Auburn. The first year of playing, they're not comfortable. You see that with junior college kids, kids who are ineligible academically. It takes a while to feel that comfort zone. Seven feet, 235 pounds. He's got low post skills, he being Geiger. And Ohio State with the basket. Craig Lee finding holes in the zone. Crowd wanted a walk against Kenny Anderson. It's a 13-9 Georgia Tech lead. 14-13 remaining in the first half. And Baker with the matchup. You can't go for the dribble. Anderson. Carter with the rebound. Tech 6 of 10 from the floor. Starting off well. Uh -huh. Lee, nice pass. A little too much dribbling. Oh, great look, though, from the point. Jim Jackson sees it all. And a good look. Kenny Anderson to John Barry, and Barry can't get the roll. Gary, make that Barry looking awfully fluid, though, Bill. Offensive-minded. When Kenny runs the show and he's off the ball, he's more efficient. Bill Robinson in to replace Treg Lee for Ohio State. Robinson, a seven-footer, knocking in at 250 pounds, a junior. A Baker, according to Randy Ayers, back full tilt right now. The ankle is healed. He's a different basketball player running the show. Carter gets the roll. Soft touch from Carter in the paint on his jump shots, not so from the free throw line. Our big guys, even muscular ones, can get a little roll once in a while. <laughs> Mackey oh. got the drop. Be silent. Like more often. Bobby Crimmins getting a lot out of him. And the shot drops off the glass. Jamal Brown. You cannot relax against Ohio State. They'll come right back at you. The offensive-minded pressure, the mentality, and, of course, the high kiss to boot. Tech not getting set in that 2-3 zone. Paying for it. That foul Jamal ball is set to John Barry, his first team fourth. Brown trying to bring the Buckeyes within one. Uh, Brown, they're tagging 
Kenny Anderson, first Baker, now Brown. A little physical player on him at this point. Three-guard lineup in there for Tech. Anderson roaming to get free. Now, Barry's a multi-positional player. Much better than they thought coming in. Anderson rebounded by Robinson. Jackson drills the open jumper. Now the ability to bounce to ecstasy. And a tie ball game. Anderson over the seven-footer. And Bill Robinson picks up the foul. Well, you're in trouble defensively when you can dribble against the zone you've set up. This is just not paying attention to business, but miraculous sleight of hand by the All-American. Treg Lee back into the lineup, replacing Perry Carter. That foul again on Bill Robinson, one of the few players in the country, Robinson, who's almost even in terms of personal fouls and points. He has 74 personal fouls and only 81 points. You are cruel today. You're well, getting it all in. They got a lane violation. <laughs> Let's say Kenny Anderson was on the line when he shot. You don't see that so often, at least in the playgrounds we grew up in. As, as frequent as hen's teeth, maybe, huh? <laughs> you know, the substituting up front by Randy Ayers, now he's rotating his big guys to be physical and strong, knowing the limitations of Georgia Tech up front. Anderson drops in his third point. <laughs> and a foul called on John Barry. So Barry picking up his second personal foul. Georgia Tech foul, number 14. Nice move by Bobby Crimmins, the 2-2-1 two -two pressure. Ohio State was not ready for it. What a great year for them when you think of at least losing two great players and Scott and Oliver coming back with Kenny Anderson and company. They've had some ups and downs. Nice look. Lee. Anderson showing his rebounding prowess. Averaging just about six rebounds a game, Kenny Anderson. Anderson rubs him off a pick, and Robinson picks up another foul. Second on Robinson. That'll be the 14th foul. So we've got a break in the action here in Dayton, Ohio. Tech leads it by one. It begins with the efficiency of sequential Ford fuel injection. It flows through a power plant cradled in fluid-filled mountings, and it manifests itself in the precision of Bonneville's fully independent suspension. This is advanced technology you can feel. This is full-sized excitement from Pontiac. This is Bonneville. to recognize the sacrifice made by our armed forces and their families. We do have a special military fair here. Now, with our welcome home fairs, active military personnel and their eligible family dependents can travel the USA for 70% less. Albuquerque, New Mexico? Is that your hometown? That's right, ma'am. I'm going home. Anti-lock brakes? Somewhere between crime and punishment is dark justice. Premieres Friday, April 5th on CBS Late Night. It's too hot to sleep. For well, the 12th time in the last 22 years, this has been the site of an NCAA tournament game. Ohio State has never led in this contest. 11 minutes, 55 seconds remaining. Trailing by one as we take a look at Bobby Crimmins. And I talked to Bobby before the game. His dad passed away about a year ago. He carries a shamrock. And this is March 17th. They're very successful on March 17th, 2-0 and a memorial card of his dad, County Curry and Cork, the mother and father of Brockton. Anderson off the mark. This is Jim Jackson to Treg Lee. 
Jackson. Liam playing volleyball. Too many. Brown gets the tap. Brian Hill. Third personal foul on Brian Hill, a charging foul. James, the problem when you beat the pressure is who's going to make the decision? If it's Kenny Anderson, you're a good coach. If it's Brian Hill, he's got to be the receiver of the pass leading directly to the basket. So a major defensive player out of the game for Georgia Tech. Bobby's going to be forced to come out and play man-to-man -man eventually. They're finding too many holes, too many offensive opportunities, and Bobby Crimmins gets a technical. Protesting the call against Brian Hill. Crimmins thought that it was a blocking foul. Protested it too much. Now, Bobby Crimmins, I enjoy him because he's a little bit like me. He's volatile. He says his two cents worth but you can see Robinson set up in plenty of time Hill committed early but before the game he's not himself he's not sure who's who and Jimmy Hebron before his assistant before the Carolina game said coach who should we put on King Rice he said let's put John Crotty on him he said coach he plays he said no 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 hey, put University of Virginia <laughs> so before the game he is in a knot one of two free throws from Jackson expands the lead Robinson has it even more it's now a four-point Ohio State lead. Zamalek enables Kenny Anderson to play off the ball. So this is sort of the scoring-minded offense. And they get Robinson, your man. Robinson comes off the bench with the foul. According to the coaching staff, he's now got three. In the practice line, he has a couple of giveaways. <laughs> Gets well, in the scorebook early. Malcolm Mackey really wants the ball badly down low as Perry Carter comes in to replace Bill Robinson. And Chris Gent in to replace Jamal Brown. Chris Gent started on Friday night in place of Treg Lee. Treg Lee, late for team meeting on game day. First time in 28 games, Lee did not start. He's the electricity, the fire in their press, too. So it'll go up a notch for Ohio State. Anderson. Anderson only one of six on the floor. Good defense being applied to him. Lee. Nice, nice pass into Perry Carter. In and out. If Carter finds the range, it looks like he can have his way physically just much stronger. Stepping in front of the inside people, they're not doing a good job. It's not their preferred defense. They're just trying to steal time, Georgia Tech. Jackson rebounds. Barry's miss. Great. Lee, nice pass. <laughs> Ohio State ball. When your best player gives it up, is unconcerned about points, good things happen as Jimmy Jackson certainly showed. The extra pass, the head up. I think he's one of the great players in the country. The pass that leads to the pass, and the only problem wasn't a strong finish, but a big guy. Jackson gets his own rebound. Carter blocked by Geiger. Somehow Carter doesn't feel right unless someone is hanging on his body. He likes to bang some people. As they spend a lot of time in the weight room, maintenance during the season two days before, and Carter with the giveaway. Matt Geiger calling for the ball is fouled by Perry Carter. That's number one on Carter. Sixth on Ohio State. One away from the one and one. Uh, JB, I asked Perry Carter, I said, who's stronger in the weight room, you or Trent Lee? And he looked at me and said, you have to ask? Like, take a look at this. The three-guard lineup for Tech. 
Anderson to Mollett. John Barry out of the game now, so they're back to a standard two-guard set. <laughs> Kenny Anderson should have taken it on the same side. Nice backdoor. I think Newbell fouls at the end of this, JB. Step with that lead foot out and put the right foot forward. Great. I thought he should have taken it this side. Tries to add a little extra, comes up short. Takes a lot of strength to do that. And the foul actually assessed to Matt Geiger. That's number two on Geiger, seventh tech foul. John so it's a one and one situation here. Off the bench for Ohio State, getting set to check in. Jamie Skelton, 6'2", freshman Ohio guard. State. And he replaces Jim Jackson. Replacing Jim Jackson. A rest substitution. A good defender coming in. And you may look for Baker to do more damage with the bounce now with Skelton in the ballgame. Speaking of damage, that's what Perry Carter does at the free throw line. <laughs> He's not in that way. He hasn't broken any backboards. He's been chipped a little paint here and there. In fact, the rim did require repainting. A 15-3 run by Ohio State has the Buckeyes in front. 22-16. And this defense is really disrupting the Tech offense. Well, Skelton can really rag a guy. Anderson still cannot find the range. One of eight for Anderson. And Baker charging foul. And twist the ankle. And it's that same ankle that Randy Ayer said must be completely healed because of his defensive play on Friday night. Let's see whether or not it plagues him. And uh, JB, they were saying he just took off a cast for the game the other night for the first time. But Dumalik with nice position. You can be moving as long as you're in front of the dribbler. Baker playing in front of hometown fans here at Dayton, Ohio, played at Dunbar High. That's where Kenny's tougher, right out at the top. He can make these. Demolic misses the three. And Kenny Anderson will be whistled for the foul there as he knocks down Treg Lee. Kenny Anderson picking up his first personal foul. So a tough first half for Kenny Anderson. And you see that little spot on the back of his head. That's from worry. Everybody talking the NBA. The burdens on a youngster trying to play. He just wants to enjoy himself. And he got some tonic for the hair to have it grow. People catering to him. As I mentioned before, that 15-3 run by Ohio State gave them their first lead, and they've expanded it by 6, 22-16. There's that hair lotion. If, if I had known, I would have used it for my team. They could play like Getty. <laughs> well, I'm sure the riches to come will uh, soothe that worry. Much more relaxed, though. Uh, his attitude and presence so important to the overall look of Georgia Tech. Treg Lee makes it a seven-point lead, and it stays there. Lee with the loose ball. Mackey with the rebound. So a bigger front line for Tech in there, and Geiger, Mackey, and Ivano Newbill to go along with Kenny Anderson and John Barry in the backcourt to compete with the rebounding. Ohio State physically and size-wise dominating. The difference in Ohio State, this man-to-man -man defense. They go play you. Geiger forces it. Baker on the break. Up to Carter. Blocked by Geiger, but fouled by Geiger. Number three on Matt Geiger. And a good call here in a sense. They didn't call goaltending. The pin on the glass, you can do it in college on the way up. But when you have big bodies running the floor like Ohio State and Geiger, Newbell, and Mackey cannot compete, you're going to have a long evening, a long afternoon. Take a look at Bobby Crimmins talking to Kenny Anderson. Mark Baker and Jamie Skelton have taken a seat on the bench for Ohio State. Jim Jackson and Jamal Brown back in. And talking to Kenny yesterday, he said Bobby Crimmins is a player's coach. I love playing with him, or for him. Demolic back in for Matt Geiger. Perry Carter won for the last 10 at the free throw line. Two for 11. So Carter 
more pleased than anyone for making that one. The women's final four in two weeks. Hi, my name is Mike. This is a story about me and my friends. I like my mom, she's a wonderful mother. And my dad, he is the one cool dude. That's my teacher. She is the best. Mike's a super kid. Mike is very... Brilliant. Outspoken. That's my friend Tracy. I think she's beautiful. Come on, let's take a ride to McDonald's. There's all my friends. Hey, you know, me and James are our best pals. <laughs> we are a great team. Hi, is up. Perfect. Ever since I was a little baby, people are always trying to help me. So now I love to say, welcome to McDonald's. May I help you? The Mazda MPV four-wheel drive can help you get just about anywhere you want to go. Let's go home. Its V6 engine and rear anti-lock brakes let you handle even the worst weather with confidence. Face it, Mom, we stink. Hey, where's that team spirit, huh? Hey, Gail, the other team couldn't make it. You guys win by forfeit. The Mazda MPV four-wheel drive. It just feels right. If the weather stays bad, we can take the tire. Georgia Tech did start fast, five of eight from the floor since they've gone two of 12. That accounts for that 35% field goal percentage. Hill and Geiger in foul trouble, and as Billy Packer mentioned, Tech does not have a deep bench. As a result, Tech trailing by eight with 7.20 remaining in the first half. This is Brian Demolic for Tech. Is that Gent? You don't need a janitor when Chris Gent plays for your club. Floor burns. Oh, he'll clean it up. If he slides any further, he'll catch on fire. The laundromat may not be happy. So it's the three-guard alignment for Tech. Anderson, Demolic, and Barry, along with Mackey and Ivano Newbill, down low. Under 10 on the shot clock, Mackey. For Newbill with the rebound. Got to make that. Jackson blocked by Mackey. Tech ball. And Jamal Brown trying to get the steal, knocks it out of bounds. Tech ball. Ohio State, the number one seed, leading the eighth seed, Georgia Tech. 24-16. Tech had gotten off very quickly, and Kenny Anderson only his second That's field goal, two of nine from the floor. But his Tech teammates had started fast. Since then, the Ohio State defense has really bothered him, Bill. That and rebound. This is the best defense I've seen Ohio State since their Indiana game, February 21st. They are aggressive, going after people. Jet. Off the mark, Newbill with the rebound. We talked about Ohio State on the boards. 21 to 12 off the glass. And Anderson drawing the foul from Jamal Brown. Ohio State held off a scrappy Towson State to advance Georgia Tech easily by 17 over DePaul. They're meeting now. Coming later, it'll be Texas and St. John's. Two coaches who are very familiar with each other. Tom Penders and Luke on the second. Well, they've had a number of ball games, but in this particular game, I think Kenny Anderson has been stymied. He's much better out on top, doing some penetrating. But good pressure defense and the great offensive rebounding by Ohio State has been the story. Anderson with six points, coming off of a 31-point night on Friday night. But you can see he's struggling from the field today. So he didn't want to call his high school coach Jack Cowan because he played poorly in the ACC. And he knew Jack would be all over him. Thought he would call him last night after a good performance this weekend. Well, I'm sure he's hoping he can make the phone call today as well. 
still the 2-3. They're saving their man-to-man. -man. But they've got to rebound out of it, and they're very small, particularly on Barry's side of the zone. Mark Baker to Jim Jackson. Perry Carter, Trent Lee, and Jamal Brown to five. This is Brown for three. Lee with the rebound. And he scores. The ninth offensive rebound by Ohio State. Basket will not count. But again, underscoring the physical strength advantage that Ohio State enjoys. Well, JP, in the zone, you don't have a priority in a checkout. But Newbell didn't run in, be aggressive, present himself. You've got a body step into somebody. They're not doing it. They're very listless in their pursuit of mission. We mentioned that Treg Lee did not start on Friday night, the first time in 28 games because he was late for a team meeting. He said he wants to make amends today out here on the floor. Lee drops in his third point of the afternoon. Chris Gent into the lineup, replacing Jamal Brown. The deployment by Bobby Crimmins has enabled them to get the ball in. They've brought both big guys down. They've been able to hit them just like this and diffuse the pressure. And no secondary break by or trapped by Ohio State. Shows you how suffocating the defense of Ohio State has been. One field goal in the last seven minutes. Georgia Tech lucky to be down by only six and a foul called on Malcolm Mackey and he can't believe it. That's foul number two on Mackey. Well, they're setting up their post cut. What do they call him? Cream puff. New Cream Bell. puff. <laughs> he says he's got the big cheeks. He can see why. But there was a post play for Anderson to curl and receive the pass. They said Mackey moved. Now, major decision for Bobby Crimmins. He's already got two guys with three personal fouls. Brian Hill, his best defender, and Matt Geiger. Do you leave Mackey in there, running the risk of him picking up his third personal? Well, his experience, hopefully, will help him in this situation. It depends how a coach has been doing it all year long. And in this case, he's leaving Mackey. You may see him yo-yo Geiger and Mackey in the next five minutes. Would you leave him in? Uh, I would right now and just make sure he doesn't move on any of his post screens. Baker, one of two at the free throw line for Ohio State. Anderson, oh! still pressing. Jent gets the loose ball. They use the floor, don't they? Mm, all of it. And he uses his body nicely. Carter can't get the drop, though. Numbers. And Anderson, you can tell he's really trying to take control himself. Numbers and in control. Nine points for Kenny Anderson, a five-point Ohio State lead. Under five to play in the first half. Anderson with the steal. Over to Dumalik. Kenny sees Mackey. Him. Great look. Dumalik, it's contagious. Kenny sees everything. He didn't make the gamble pass. Held on to the dribble. Nice pass by Brian DeMolic, who played with Dennis Scott in high school at Flint Hill Prep in Oakton, Virginia. The overload should be on Barry's side. You see Jackson over there? I think they can do some damage right there. Carter with the rebound. Slapped out of bounds by DeMolic. 3.46 left in the first half. It's a three-point Buckeyes lead. Okay, just like I show you now, on the paper. On the paper. Yeah, no, come on back. Come on back. Ted introduces training Good. shoes. On the paper. On the paper. No, I said on the paper. Kids, they feel good. Anybody want to go outside? Ted's introduces. Yeah, me neither. Loafers. Kids, they feel good. So what'd you use? My checkered face framing hammer. In New Britain, Connecticut, people don't talk about the weather. You use a checkered face framing hammer? Where was your curved cloth finish hammer? You see, since 1843, New Britain's been the home of Stanley. But I got him a Stanley handsaw last year for his birthday. And if local conversation revolves around tools... Hey, fellas, look at this. Whoa! It's only because we make tools worth talking about. Stanley's 12-foot power lock table rule, huh? When it came to redefining the word luxury, it wasn't a Webster. 
It was Oldsmobile. The 98 defines luxury in terms of how much you get, not how much you spend. Anti-lock brakes, fuel-efficient power, computerized suspension, technology found in cars costing thousands more. And you can always take a Webster at his word. This is the, new. the new 98, luxury redefined. Generation models. Great values, big prizes during Oldsmobile's drive to the Final Four Celathon. You can't miss. This is Harry Smith. And I'm Paula Zahn. Tomorrow, Robert De Niro. He's starring in a new movie about blacklisting in the 50s. Plus, Gene Hackman joins us on CBS This Morning. Triple header coverage coming your way today on CBS. Some of you will see Penn State against Eastern Michigan. Big win by Penn State. Wake Forest, a big rugged front line against Alabama. Texas St. John's from right here at the University of Dayton. And, of course, Michigan State will take on Utah. Randy Ayers, boy, does he have a physically strong team. He does, and uh, he worked under Gary Williams, not afraid to steal things. Felt that Gene Cady had the strongest team in the league. Went and got that weight program. Installed it here at Ohio State. And I said, have do you use the weights? He said, no, I ride the bike. <laughs> He's pretty impressive to me. Speaking of Gene Cady, do you remember the Prince of Pets? Jim Rowinski? Oh, yeah, and Rowinski, and then Scheffler, of course. Mm -hmm. Big Ten Player of the Year. Baker. Anderson with the rebound. Anderson. Anderson slowly but surely finding the range. 11 for 27 for the Tech team from the floor. And Tech trailing by just one. Uh, Kenny said that Jack Curran, his coach, said, Kenny, you've got to hit the jumper. And he said it in the New York accent, too. But he Gent said for three, Chris Gent. Billy, it looks like Ohio State intermittently applying the press. Uh, they are now back to a 1-3-1 half court. So you're going to get baseline jumpers in this. Of course, their wing people are Lee and Jackson. They're a great rebounding team in this set. Defense, 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 defense. A 30-26 Ohio State lead with 2-13 remaining in the first half. Kenny Anderson off the mark three of his last five after starting one of eight so Kenny Anderson has helped to bring the Yellow Jackets within striking distance but it's been the suffocating full court trapping defense of Ohio State and their mastery on the boards that's been the difference so far and their physical play too. their man-to-man -man defense has been look at this man. well you love it when your president applauds I had seven and ten years <laughs> they gave me the Bronx cheer. Well, they ought, to find, they ought to find a hat that fits him, though. <laughs> Last 10 minutes, you see the story of the game there. Georgia Tech not doing very well from the field, nor Ohio State. But Ohio State has the six-point lead. See, this defense keeps the ball out of Anderson's hands. Over. See Baker jamming up. They're going to force him to take some tough shots, if possible. Mackey, quick shot, but gets the drop. Malcolm Mackey drops in his 10th point, and Mackey on the season averaging 15. Well, the philosophy by Ayers worked because you get the other people to shoot it, not Anderson. Baker, Lee, Robinson, Gent, and Jackson to five. And this is Bill Robinson, seven-footer, with the rebound and score. Size rebounds right now. And Anything from Robinson is gravy. He averages only two points a game. Well, they don't ask him to do a lot of things on that end. They've got some other answers. And they're going to delay a little, get, get a rest here. Under 30 to play in the first half. Got a four-second discrepancy in the shot clock and game clock. And they go man-to-man -man now. Look at the double up. Under 10 on the shot clock. Demolic over to Barry for three. Air ball. Mackey has it stripped. Jim Jackson to Baker. Oh. Chris J. 
chance set this up with the defense. But look at the ability to find people. Oh, great control that's, of the game. That's the end of the first half with the score. Ohio State 36, Tech 28. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship will continue after this message from your local station. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the second round of the NCAA Basketball Championship is sponsored by McDonald's. Always good food, always good value. Kids, they feel good. And by Stanley, since 1843, Stanley has been helping people do things right. Every summer weekend, millions of the smartest guys in America fire up their Murray mowers. What makes them so smart is that Murray's rated one of the best in quality and performance, with a two-year warranty backed by 10,000 service dealers at a price that's about half of other top quality mowers, which makes Murray mowers tough as they come, any way you cut it. Oldsmobile, official car for NCAA championships, calls this time out to tell you about the other game in town. The Oldsmobile Drive to the Final Four Cellophon. At your Olds dealer, you can get a great deal on every new 1991 Oldsmobile. In addition to the terrific values, you'll also have a shot at winning hundreds of prizes like a new Cutlass Supreme or a large screen TV. Hey, with deals like this, you can't miss. If you have an insurance repair on your home and you have Allstate, it's in our hands. We know some very reliable contractors. It's our business too. So if you choose a contractor we recommend, we guarantee the workmanship of their repairs for one year. That's why you're in good hands with Allstate. A member of the Sears Financial Network. He's on the run from outlaws who killed his family. But is a mysterious drifter his only hope? Rick Schroeder and Wilfred Brimley. Blood River, tonight. If she pleads guilty to a driving offense, she's admitting it's her car, and we can connect her to the jewelry. And the murder. Suppose we go to court on this, and I, and I twist you up like a pretzel. The pizza's getting cold. Damn! The Antagonist, Tuesday, March 26th. This is CBS. Mmm, Hardy's 99 cent breakfast out mm, made from scratch biscuit with sausage. That's the one I want. Sold. Yeah, wait a sec. Pan the pancakes look good too. Okay, pancakes it is. Hold it. Biscuits and gravy. I didn't see those. Or or hot cinnamon raisin biscuits full sauce. 99 cents. Go back. Can I help you? Ooh. With all this at 99 cents, the only easy choice is where to go. Ah, sausage with cinnamon raisin biscuit. 99 cent breakfast. Only Hardy's. I'm calling this time out to tell you about the other game in town, the Oldsmobile Drive to the Final Four Cellophon. At your old dealer, that means more than cash back. It means this specially equipped Cutlass Supreme with a three-point bonus back that won't cost you extra. V6, fog lamp, leather-wrapped steering wheel, aluminum wheels, and more. A $12.99 value. No extra charge. As for cash back, your old dealer will toss that in, too. Hey, with deals like this, you can't miss. Welcome back to New York, everybody. Jim Nance along with Billy Thacker and Mike Francesa. It's an eight-point lead for the Buckeyes at the intermission. And what a big goal right before the, uh, the buzzer there, Mike. Well, it was a big four-point turnaround. Instead of being maybe four, it's eight. But I think uh, Georgia Tech is in pretty decent shape here. Anderson only four for 13 in the first half. And they had a chance, Billy, to blow Georgia Tech out. And they didn't do it. I think Georgia Tech is still in this ballgame. Well, one of the things uh, about this team so much different than last year, and you can see the pressure on Kenny Anderson. He's 4 for 13 in the first half, realizing he has to do so much. He's no longer a member of the Lethal Weapon 3. He's just out there by himself. I think it's very discouraging for that young man. You notice the spotting in his hair. They're yep. calling him spots. Uh, the, the tremendous amount of pressure. Do you go pro? Don't you go pro? I think there needs to be a major change in NCAA legislation. 
so that these young kids have an opportunity to make that decision in a reasonable amount of time. Losing his hair because of all the, that the nervous energy. That wasn't my choice, but uh, I was going to ask you. It wasn't called me spots, but, uh, but same uh, thing that happened to Roger Maris exactly. when he chased Babe Ruth in '61. Right. Guys, looking ahead, of course, the big game out west pit to Georgetown against defending national champion Nevada Las Vegas. And as Leslie Visser reports from Tucson, right now UNLV is worried about more than just the problems the Hoyas can present. It's okay to believe the hype about UNLV. They have the talent, the timing, the technicolor dunks. About their only concern is the status of center George Ackles, who sprained the top of his foot two days ago against Montana. The foot isn't swollen, but UNLV is not going to decide whether or not he'll start until just before the game. He's going to run, shoot a little bit, test it, see how severe the pain is. One possible scenario is that he won't start, but he'll come off the bench behind junior Elmore Spencer. In the meantime, Jerry Tarkanian's been looking forward to this game for a long time. He's never beaten Georgetown, and one of the worst defeats of his career came six years ago when the Hoyas beat the Rebels by 36 points. Well, they had Patrick four to five times, so uh, I'm glad Patrick's not going to suit up Sunday. About, I guess, Michigan. That's the next set of games here on our Triple Header Sunday. Now, when we come back, Villanova and North Carolina will give you a live look as they're about to start the second half from Syracuse. We'll continue in just a moment. Personal 800 calls on Mother's Day. An eight-point lead for Ohio State and having the advantage on the offensive rebounding stat board. It's an 11-2 advantage in that department. Right now, they've just begun the second half in Syracuse. A 12-point lead for Carolina at the half. It's now at 10. Here's Tim Ryan along with Dan Bonner. Second round action. Carolina and Villanova. The Tar Heels by 10. Tim Ryan with Dan Bonner. And Carolina with the ball early in the second half. We're just underway, 18.40 to go. It's a game that has so far really proved the point that coaches' time is before the game, players' time is during the game. Villanova has executed Roley Massimino's attack very well right up to the point where it's been time to shoot the ball in the goal. Villanova has not shot well, and as a result, they've fallen behind by 12. Davis with a two-pointer for 10 points on the game for Carolina. Third out for Walker. Lance Miller, he's got it. Villanova comes out shooting much better in the second half. Those open jump shots will go down. We'll have a better game in the second half. Rice driving, but Dowdell blocked it. Walker quickly the other way. Three on two, and Walker with a jump. 46 to 38, 11 points. Walker. Everybody talked about how this game would be a slowly paced game that Villanova would try to slow the ball down. It's been anything but a slowly paced game. Fox from the top of the key. Eight points for Fox. All right, so Rick Fox answers the Villanova flurry to begin the second half. We'll keep you posted on this game, but we've got to get you back to Dayton for Georgia Tech and Ohio State after this word from your local station. Traction control system of the Lexus LS400 helps reduce tire spin across rain, sleet, snow, even an occasional patch of ice. Sylvania light in 6,000 ways. None of them small. At GTE, the power is on. Extra strength Rolaids antacid. Stronger because it has more calcium carbonate. More than any Tums tablet. And salt free. More calcium carbonate and salt free. This settles it once and for all. This is CBS. I'm tired of the game. 
why can't one car dealer say, I'll sell it at this price, make a reasonable profit, and we'll both be okay? Makes sense. Fine. Try to find a car dealer who does. Hannon Olds Nissan. Just try us. I'd love a high-performance sports car, but who's got $30,000 to blow? Could you handle a Nissan 240SX for $12,990? No problem. But try and find a car dealer who will do that. And an old Nissan. Just try us. This is it. There's only one light beer with big draft taste. Cold filtered Miller Genuine Draft Light. Yeah, we're gonna need some help up here. Over. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the second round of the NCAA Basketball Championship is sponsored by today's Chevrolet, who invite you to see why more people are winning with the heartbeat of America. Subway, sandwiches and salads for the healthy appetite. And by Bud Drive, why ask why? Try Bud Drive for refreshment that's beyond question. Halftime of game one here at the University of Dayton, Ohio State on top 36-28. James Brown back with Bill Raftery, but Bill, it is not a comfortable eight-point lead by Ohio State. As a matter of fact, Georgia Tech ought to feel pretty good. But they have to. Uh, they haven't played real well. They also have saved their primary defense to man-to-man, -man, so they have that in safekeeping. A couple of foul problems, of course, with Georgia Tech with uh, Hill and Geiger with three. But it's been the overall defensive philosophy that's helped Ohio State in the first half. Well, the full-court pressure is to recover once they beat you and get back. And you can see the deflection by Gent set up this little two-on two break but the sleight of hand the ability to find people by Jim Jackson great look and here's a guy he's out of control but he's in control he can ring the bell with the best of them hasn't had a great great shooting half but with this kind of penetration he could get this club right back in it why should Georgia Tech feel good at the half well, they were manhandled on the offensive glass, 11 to 3. They're still in the game by only 8. Another reason, field goal percentage, horrible the last 7 minutes and 30 seconds. Ohio State again getting a lot of second chance opportunities. And a hot and cold first half by Kenny Anderson. Started only 1 of 8, finished up 3 of 5. He is the leading scorer at half. At the halfway mark, Jim Jackson with 10 points. Jim Jackson averaging 18, but again, Brian Hill for Georgia Tech saddle with three personal fouls, the best defensive player. Back in there, he will be charged with the responsibilities in a man-to-man -man with covering Jackson. 2-3 zone to start, and the one thing Randy Ayers did well was change people on Anderson. A lot of different looks and a lot of different sizes to compete against. And again, a lot of negative numbers that I talked about, but again, reasons why Georgia Tech ought to feel pretty good being clearly within striking distance. Lee into Carter, and Carter. So Perry Carter called for traveling. Not an impressive first half at all for Georgia Tech, a hot and cold one in general. Trailing by only eight, Georgia Tech in the yellow uniforms against Ohio State. And Kenny Anderson, 11 first half points, but indeed a hot and cold half for him. Only four of 13 from the field, so it's still anybody's ball game, Bill Raftery. And he can scoot and blow by people. Right now, he's the point guy. A lot of, a lot of bumps for him on the post area. And Baker having a problem, but look at the help by Carter. Geiger, nice pass from Anderson and the slam. That's the read, the understanding. He drew the big guy, knew somebody was free, the soft lob. If Kenny can be, continue to be that unselfish, that helps him and everybody else, too. When he forces, they have problems. Barrett, over to Anderson. Anderson can't get the layup. Mackey with the rebound, though. The follow by Barry. Aggressive play by John Barry and Geiger off of his knee. And again, the forceful nature, they get it down quickly. Tech not set. Barry. Rebound and leading the break. Pass to Geiger. 
And Geiger, the recipient of a second assist. And Geiger. If you get down the floor, you can do some damage. Look at this. Oh, my goodness. And John Barry threw wow. himself into the table, reminiscent of when he fell into the table up at the Meadowlands, but was out for a few minutes. Uh, you worked that game, but this is effort. You have to love his performance every game. He's made himself into a terrific college player. Heart dedication and all-out effort hey Billy that ought to inspire the other players <laughs> it's got to be contagious probably knocked out a laptop computer though <laughs> Carter Anderson oh. and the score Well, you talk about explosion and things being contagious. He must have met somebody at a young age because he's been good for a long time. Kenny Smith's his buddy and the guy he looks up to. Well, Kenny can't blow by much quicker. Mark Baker picked up his second personal foul as Kenny Anderson drops in his 14th point. It's a three-point ball game. Ohio State led by eight at the half. There's Kenny now with Houston lighting it up. Former Malloy great. Treg Lee from Perry Carter. Look Carter it. with the rebound. And a strong move by Perry Carter. Randy Ayers has been getting the ball to the high post and then down. You can see the inside scoring by Ohio State. Anderson. Should have passed it. Hill. Mackey. A fresh 45, Anderson. A little too quick now. I gotta slow it down. Geiger. Charging foul. And personal foul number four on Matt Geiger. So you have to pull the plug. And Anderson was not out front, so they went for it right away. Geiger assumes that's what the coach wants. If the point guy can get it back, bring it back out, calm everybody down, something good might happen. Ivano Newbill comes in to replace Matt Geiger. So Geiger, who started strong, picks up another foul, number four. He's on the bench. Now you lead him to trouble. The high-low has been devastating there, and the dump down of the shot. And Carter having his own way with the rebounds, continuing the mastery on the offensive glass. Perry Carter with 13 points. JB, he can have his way with me anytime. The man, of course, who was voted by many in Columbus as having the best body in Columbus, Perry Carter. And uh, hey, that's said with a little uh, sarcasm, I think. Hill blocked from behind by Treg Lee, but a foul. Treg Lee picks up foul number one. Or envy, baby, over the body. <laughs> <laughs> Kenny now has to take over, and I mean in the assist category. Get the mindset organized. Get his big people involved shot, and shot, play within himself. Great, great competitor. Hill looking to cut into a Buckeye seven point lead. The tech coaching staff would really love to see Brian Hill put the ball up a bit more, but he doesn't shoot it enough, but he is perhaps the best perimeter shooter because he's from your neighborhood he used to sneak out late at night and shoot in the backyard his mother thought he was asleep play for red jenkins down at wt woodson in um, in virginia and the official very aggressively running by knocked off the monitor that we had here on the table bill well and, and he didn't feel a thing <laughs> bill bobo with a lot of hustle jerry donahy and of course tom o'neill has done a nice job up to that point And we're set to play after a little housekeeping. Randy Ayers, Big Ten Coach of the Year. Already selected by the United States Basketball Writers of America as the National Coach of the Year as well. Now, I might be tempted to put Jackson in the high post. They're getting shots there. He hasn't had many. Jackson on the glass. Can't find the drop. But Perry Carter does. Call the Red Cross. Tech needs help on the glass. 
Ohio State just killing Georgia Tech on the glass. Second chance points underscores the remark. Ooh. Barry for three. Too deep, too quick. Composure essential by Tech right now. And Kenny Anderson picks up foul number two. Team second. And Ohio State, staying with it, has pushed the lead back up to eight. There's a thread that runs through our lives. A thread that binds us together. Friendship. Family. Pride. These are the values that endure. The best things have always been those that last. Chevrolet. The truck that lasts. Buckeyes lead with 15-38 remaining, and teams here in Dayton, Ohio, looking to advance to the round of 16. Texas and St. John's yet to come. Two teams yesterday from the other half of the Midwest bracket, UConn and Duke, have advanced to the round of 16. Duke with an excellent performance from that freshman, Grant Hill, playing with a hip pointer as well as a broken nose. Talk about tenacity. Great talent. We'll be enjoying him for years to come. And they post up, Jackson. Got to get him in the flow. Foul whistled under the basket. Carter, that time with the shove, of course, he raises his arm and three people move generally. <laughs> well, Randy Ayers has to be pleased with Perry Carter's performance. Eight points, 11 rebounds, five on the offensive glass. You take a look at Tech, Tech itself with eight second half points. Barry, Malcolm Mackey, Ryan Hill, Kenny Anderson, and Evano Newbill, the five in for Georgia Tech. This little pick and roll I like. They haven't gone to it much. I think you got to give Kenny some help. Barry can't get the three. And Mackey trying to find some room is fouled. I think it's Mark Baker. That will be number three on Mark Baker. So Randy Ayers will have to do something. And it looks like he is, in fact, Jamie Skelton coming in to replace Mark Baker. Skelton, another local boy from the Dayton area, played at Meadowdale High School. Known by his teammates as perhaps the weakest of the guys in the weight <laughs> well, they tease room. <laughs> That's right. He might as well stay shoot layups. And a layup indeed was that Brian dropped Hill. in by Brian Hill. And a real breakdown defensively that time by Ohio State. Man to man, the last two trips by Tech. And they saved this all game. Jackson loses the handle but gets the ball back and pushes the Buckeyes back in front by eight. Pretty! Grant Lee with the slam. Well, Ohio State generally doesn't like the forward pass, but if they decide to become a passing team in football, put Jimmy Jackson 
at quarterback. He just finds people, loves to dish. Craig Lee picks Craig up his Lee second personal second. foul. That'll be the fifth team foul for Ohio State as Bill Robinson, the seven-footer, comes back in to replace Robinson Craig Lee. Lee. And I mentioned triple header coverage coming your way. Penn State, East Michigan, Eastern Michigan, Wake Forest in Alabama, Texas St. John's from right here, Michigan State, and Rick Majerus' squad, the Utah squad. Big day right here on CBS. This is Ohio State's biggest lead, 10 points, 48-38, with 14 minutes remaining in the contest. Geiger, too anxious to get it, kicks it, get it over to the Buckeyes. They're gonna say he kicked it, you're right, but Carter defensively, with the strength, pushed Geiger in the back, then released, and Geiger, as most postmen, fell back. It's an old Rick Mahorn trick in the NBA with the Sixers. Rick Mahorn, every bit as strong, well, as a matter of fact, stronger than Maybe. Terry Carter. <laughs> a couple of years <laughs> older. The double screen. Jamal Brown. Mackey with the rebound. A wide open Barry, he didn't notice. Anderson. Oh. Oh. Bill, I guess as good a stat as any to underscore how Kenny Anderson is pressing, he has only one assist on the afternoon. And uh, against North Carolina, he was in double figures. And that's what they need from him. He's coming down and popping instead of initiating the offense. Well, Malcolm Mackey, while he started off quickly in the scoring column, certainly has been doing it on the boards. He's got 12, trying to keep Georgia Tech within range. Georgia Tech, ball. Why do women always know when you're not telling them the whole story? And why do they always change plans at the last minute? And why do we keep putting up with them? Why ask why? Try Bud Dry. It's cold filtered for smooth draft taste and dry brewed for no aftertaste. So while women may remain a mystery, refreshment won't. that we have come to know and trust. Pride, good friends, and simple, honest value. These are the things we know we can depend on. Chevrolet, the cars more Americans depend on. Is the Washington Monument on shaky ground? No, but the man who they call the Washington Monument may be. Watch 60 Minutes tonight. Midwest region second round action. First game of the afternoon. Number one seed, Ohio State. The eighth seed, Georgia Tech. Buckeyes leading it by 10. Bench strength, wearing tech down physical interchanging people on kenny anderson but more importantly good defenders on barry as well when they interchange and the idea coming in by randy Ayers and staff was to shut other people down and they've done that barry only two of eight from the floor and kenny anderson with that miss five of 18 from the floor and i think jamie skelton is going to be tagged with that foul the ohio state foul number 15 jamie skelton First personal on Jamie Skelton. The shooting woes for Tech continue. Give Ohio State a lot of credit as Bill Raftery talked about the defense. Front court scoring manhandled. The Buckeyes just doing a great job. And Barry, one of seven now from three-point range. Now you get used to a guy ringing the bell and it diffuses the enthusiasm when he can't nail him. Jim Jackson, Jamie Skelton, Chris Gent, Bill Robinson, and Perry Carter, the five in white for Ohio State. This is Perry Carter, jump hook. 
Mackey with his 13th rebound. Mackey's done the job. He sure has. And Jimmy Jackson was the point guy that trip as Skelton unnecessarily rides Anderson. And picks up his second foul in the process. 12-24 remaining in the game. Ohio State holding to a 10-point lead. Uh, right now, I think Bobby Krim is what he has to do. Is let Kenny Anderson run the point, give it up, go down and through, and use either side for bumps. Mm -hmm. And then he's bumps, gonna, bumps he's being post screens, one. occasionally a single or a double, and then let him do some work when he's only 15 feet from the basket. And of course, then he won't get as much assistance defensively. So you think Anderson's working too hard with the ball himself? He, he's forcing the issue quickly. He said, let the game come to him. Mm -hmm. Anderson with 16 points. Cut into the Buckeyes lead. It's now eight. A little more pressure. Passive 2-2-1. Two, two, he can play a few positions, Kenny. At least on my, on my team he can. Listed as a guard, but opens up as a forward. This is Skelton. And Skelton drops it down. Little hometown action. Meadowdale High School here in Dayton, Ohio. He's played on this floor before. Back up to a 10-point lead. Anderson working hard and scoring. Well, he got the kiss. And 18. Shouldn't come that easy against a good defensive team. Ohio State lacks. Jackson. Blocked from behind by Geiger. Four on two. Anderson. And Robinson on his tiptoes at seven feet. Got an elbow in his forehead, and Bill Robinson is bleeding from his forehead. You said tiptoes. That was on the way down. <laughs> I was trying to be kind. Oh, he said he wasn't soaring. <laughs> Jackson is fouled. And if it's on Geiger... All right, we're going to get you right back to Ohio State and Georgia Tech, but let's uh, show you what else is happening. Michigan State and Utah in Tucson will be tipping shortly after 2 in the east. Wake Forest and Alabama, that's southeast region play. That's also in the 2 o'clock set of games. But in Syracuse, Villanova has made a rally now against North Carolina. And Mike, tell us, fill us in. What's happened? They trailed by 18. They're on a 17-8 run right now. They just turned the ball over. Down 9. They've shot the ball very well from the perimeter. 7 of 14 from 3 to get themselves back into the game, surprisingly considering that they've played a Carolina's tempo throughout. The score is North Carolina 68, Villanova 59. George Lynch just got a basket a moment ago for the Tar Heels to increase the lead to nine. Villanova had moved within seven. We'll keep you posted on that one. But in the meantime, let's get back to Ohio State with Jim Jackson on the line, James Brown, and Bill Raftery on headset for CBS. Great deal of respect for one another. Ohio State continuing its mastery on the offensive glass as Chris Gent grabs another rebound, and that has enabled Ohio State in part to stay ahead by nine here, 51-42, 10-45 remaining. James Brown along with Bill Raftery and Kenny Anderson trying to take things in his own hands. Barry for three. He is strong, he's too good a shooter. And Anderson picks up his third personal foul. Matt Geiger, the seven-footer, for Georgia Tech has already fouled out. Brian Hill has three. Kenny Anderson now has three. You notice in the screen there, Crimmins was talking to John Barry. What had happened was he's missing his shot. He forgot to get back on defense. And you, it, it affects you that way when you're a shooter. get the roll, but he does get his own rebound. And his foul. And Robinson? Take your pick, Robinson or Baker, probably Robinson. Looks like he should have fouled, huh? Now that, well, it's usually him if he's in the area. But Barry should have shot that basketball, finished that sequence, unsure of himself. And in the next 10 minutes, he has to relax. Now, Anderson getting a blow. All of a sudden, it's important, more important that Barry play within himself. Mm -hmm. Get his feet set and concentrate and nail the shot. Fourth personal foul, Bill Robinson. 
Now, psychologically, does it hurt Georgia Tech with Anderson out? Are, are they aimless without him? Well, they've got a point guard. Dominic is is a extraordinary three-point shooter, has run the point for them on occasion. But more importantly, they might be a little more patient with Kenny. Kenny gets his head back on, comes back, and might play a little better basketball. And Bill Robinson not having to jump for that rebound. <laughs> he doesn't wear out the shoes, huh? Then again, if you block out well, you don't have to. Jet. Coming off of a season-high 17 points on Friday, Chris Gent, when he got the starting nod in place of Craig Lee. Now, when he shoots, what a bonus for Randy Ayers. A 10-point lead still by Ohio State. Now, Jamalik plays within himself. Nice. Hill, nice move by Brian Hill. That's what Bobby Crimmins was looking for in the first half as well. Run some offense. Mm -hmm. That's one of the few times they ran their set. Now that could be a plus with Kenny not in there because psychologically they don't look to Kenny that much. It's a confidence builder. Well, I guess they couldn't if he wasn't in there. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> They'll look to him when he's in. 53-45, Buckeyes on top. Baker, oh. nice move. Oh, this is his floor. He had 23 Baker. against Cleveland St. Joseph's. And Carol, like all wives, so supportive. That's the toughest job of all, huh? Yeah, she's got a good job herself. Heads up the language department at the Columbus School for Girls. Oh. Nice note. There's Randy, big family, all well-educated. Maturity young age from his brother's teaching him a few things about life. Brother went to Dartmouth, older brother. New Bill. Back out to Brian Hill. And patience showing. Barry. Barry still not finding the range from three-point land. And Brian Hill with another rebound. And Becky wants the ball. Lee with the rebound for Ohio State. And Trey doing a little bit of everything. Mm -hmm. Most improved player in the conference, the Big Ten, Treg Lee. He also played on this floor for Cleveland St. Joseph against Dayton Dunbar. He played against Baker here. Robinson. New Bill with the rebound. This is Brian Damali. Randy Ayers done a marvelous job inserting different bodies in the game. They're going to be well rested the rest of the game. Newbill. And Alvano Newbill finds the range for his first basket of the afternoon. It's an eight-point Ohio State lead. And Randy Ayers wants to talk things over. 7.29 remaining. Buckeyes fans with a little bit to cheer about. The women's final four in two weeks. There's a thread that runs through our lives. A thread that binds us together. Friendship. Family. Pride. These are the values that endure. The best things have always been those that last. Chevrolet. The truck that lasts. Low fares to almost anywhere United and United Express fly. $69 to $159 to anywhere in the continental U.S. Hawaii from $149 plus great low fares to Europe and Asia. Buy your ticket by April 8th and travel between now and May 19th. Seats are limited and significant restrictions apply. So call your travel agent or United now for our new World's Fair. Come fly the friendly skies. Subway's Cold Cut Combo. It starts with the foundation of the freshest bread anywhere. Baked every four hours in every Subway store. Then cheese, three kinds of meat, and whichever of our nine tasty fixings you choose. Total construction cost, a buck 69. It's time to eat. Subway's six inch cold cut combo. For a buck 69, we can build one for you. And in 
enthusiastic. 13,500 on hand. Ohio State on top by eight. Georgia Tech shooting woes continuing, having gotten worse here in the second half. Ohio State improved principally because of their job on second chance points. Offensive rebounds, Ohio State leads 16 to 12. And Kenny Anderson trying one-handed and one man to lead the squad back. John Barry draws the offensive charge from Mark Baker. Now, the one thing about John Barry, he's going to give you an assist, even if he's struggling. Gets the ball back, Anderson back in. Let's see if he plays within himself. Give it up, go down and through. Jamie Skelton in to replace Mark Baker. Baker picks up his fourth personal foul. Five for Georgia Tech. Kenny Anderson, John Barry, Brian Hill, Malcolm Mackey, and Ivano Newbill. And they give a nice double screen. Look at the pop out by Carter. Within, Kenny Anderson with the breather. Within the system. 20 points for Kenny Anderson. Tougher for Ohio State without Baker in. And that's the kind of shot you don't want to have with Baker in. It may not have taken place. 14 rebounds for Mackey. Make it 15. And Carter draws the foul. Newbill over his back. First personal for Ivano Newbill, team fifth. And Kenny just disrupted things by coming down and drilling. He's getting better shots within the framework of the offense. Near the conclusion of every NCAA tournament game, Bill and I will select the Chevrolet most valuable player of the game from each team. And in their honor, Chevrolet donates a $1,000 scholarship to the general scholarship fund of each school. As Perry Carter draws the foul from Malcolm Mackey, that'll be three on Mackey. Now, here is where Perry Carter hates to be on the basketball floor. Well, he gets that rash. As soon as he hears the whistle, smiles, but just not confident. Doesn't have the stroke. Around the tin, he's dynamite. Here, something less than explosive. Mm -hmm. Well, the real estate business has been down. He can certainly help build a few. You think maybe he has a summer job as a, as a, as a Mason, Rick Mason? So, such a great attitude for the game. It's got to be frustrating. He may fit in with those deliveries. A little ISO in the middle of the floor. They should go deep. Carton. Goal tending. Jackson didn't have it, gave it to Gent. Great post pass. And they just don't have the numbers down low, Georgia Tech. In spite of Carter's poor free throw shooting, he's got 17 points on the afternoon. And Gent rivaling John Barry in the floor burn department. He's wild. Loose. He's wild. <laughs> then he offers it all up every minute he's on the floor. He didn't get a piece of it, but he helped Skelton get a piece. Under six to play, Anderson. Carter with the rebound. He may have walked. And he did. Had to go back to Georgia Tech. Well, Tech you, down by eight, Bill. JB, uh, you were a great player. And, uh -huh. No, you were. And, and sometimes you try and do it on your own. And Kenny Anderson at that point now, and he's actually hurting his team. Step back, get an overview, and get your other guys involved. Here's a guy they'd like to get more involved, Brian Hill. Nice job defensively by Jackson. Good pass from Hill to Newville. Plenty of time on the sack clock, 25 seconds to be exact. Yeah, Skelton might be thin and not the best in the weight room, but he works hard. Anderson, fouled by Skelton. Check that. They call it on Greg Lee. That'll be his third. As Skelton heads off to take a seat. And Chris Gent back in. Jamal Brown and Mark Baker. So it's Mark Baker, Jamal Brown, 
Jim Jackson, Treg Lee, and Perry Carter. Kenny Anderson at the line for Georgia Tech. Coach, you still have good throws. <laughs> Some try to help out there. But that, that's the other problem that Kenny's having. If you know a guy is going to beat you with the bounce, in a sense, you're the king because you can shade, pinch defensively. It's not one-on-one, -on -one, it's one-on-two, and occasionally some support from the rear. Now, that means Bobby Kremers ought to be talking to Kenny Anderson to let him know that. He is, and he's trying to calm him down. But unfortunately, he's been forceful in his mind offensively. Good steal by Hill, and Anderson converts. Kenny Anderson. Down to a four-point ball game with 5.08 remaining. Kenny Anderson with his 24th point of the afternoon. They could have switched the defense, a 2-2-1, half-court trap. Got them the easy deuce. Go low, Buckeyes. Baker. Oh. Treg Lee. Right there, push them down. And a foul right underneath. It looks like it's going to be called. Is it going to be on New Bill? Yeah, I think so. Let's say the other way, they got it on Carter. Barry Carter? Everybody pointing at Newbell, but that was because he was going to shoot. And that's three on Perry Carter. Ten team fouls on Ohio State, so that means a two-shot free throw shooting situation for Newbell. going over to Bobby to look at some X's and O's and the nicest line I heard Kenny say was Bobby makes you a better person compliment indeed and right now I don't think they're picking the personalities they like to get a free throw converted here <laughs> Newbill only a 48% free throw shooter and he misses both thinking of direction from Kenny the two missed free throws big Tech still trailing by four there's that half court trap once more they got one deuce out of it and now they settle back. The problem that Randy Ayers has now, if you get it low to Carter, the foul. It's almost an empty trip if he goes to the foul line. But then again, Tech does not have many fouls to give up. Exactly the point that I was going to make. We'll Tech with three guys in foul trouble, one having already fouled out, Matt Geiger. Jackson, under 10 seconds on the shooting clock. Jamal Brown. Good job. And Mackey. With yet another rebound. 17 rebounds for Malcolm Mackey. Underrated player. Mm -hmm. Gives them a good night. They normally win. Goes from five points to the average last year to just about 16 this season. And he's still improving. Nice pass by Mackey to Barry. Oh, good move by John Barry. Great look at the back door. Two-point game. And Newbill will pick up the foul. When they've run their offense, JB, some good things have happened. The read is Barry is denied out back. You have to understand the game well enough to make the cut. And you see Baker shutting him off. That is a deft little touch on that bounce pass by Newbell. That really underscores your point about playing within the offensive set as opposed to letting Kenny Anderson try to take too much control himself. Well, you never disarm the defense when you come down and shoot the jumper with the ball having, having not been touched by enough people. Treg Lee takes a seat on the bench, replaced by Chris. All right. As Ohio State Mark at the line. Let's show you now the closing seconds from Syracuse as we show you both sites live from Syracuse. North Carolina, the one seed, about to make it into the Sweet 16 for the 11th year in a row. Villanova got within seven in the second half, but no closer. It's a 15-point Carolina victory. North Carolina moves to the Meadowlands and into the regional semifinals. Let's go right back now to Dayton. And despite the woes of Georgia Tech, the Yellow Jackets trailing by only three with 3.18 remaining. Carolina moving on. Dean Smith with a great squad. Hill can't get the drop, but it may stay Georgia Tech ball. It does. There's the 
anybody's ball game. Three points separating these two squads. I'm Dave Johnson. For my training for the 1992 decathlon, I switched to the pump from Reebok. When I'm pumped up, my feet have support, protection, and a custom fit for leaping, vaulting, spinning, jumping, sprinting, hurling, racing, running, throwing, and uh, shot putting. Now, I'm the guy who knows cross training. Pump up, and they are out. Switch to the greatest sports performance shoe in the world, the Reebok Pump. Pump up, and air out. Ready for some good news? If your car is in an accident and you have Allstate insurance, you can leave it in our hands. Allstate's recommended pro shops can do everything, including the estimate, in one stop. And to make you feel even better, Allstate will guarantee their workmanship for as long as you own your car. Well, that's the news. Now, be careful. You're in good hands with Allstate, a member of the Sears Financial Network. The thoroughly modern design was a surprisingly courageous decision, one that we applaud for its solid step into the future. What knocked us out was the incredible control and maneuverability Caprice Classic LTZ brings to the party. And for that, we gave it this party favor. Chevrolet Caprice Classic LTZ is Motor Trend Car of the Year. It's destined to be an important car on the American scene. And now it's easy to win with a heartbeat. The man who murdered her husband was supposed to be in prison, but there wasn't enough room. We're coming out. Not if she can help it. 48 hours, Wednesday. Ohio State nursing a three-point lead with 3.06 remaining in the game. And Georgia Tech still shooting woefully from the floor, but trailing by only three. Kenny Anderson specifically, eight of 24, but his 24 points has the Yellow Jackets within range. Malcolm Mackey doing a big job on the boards. 18 rebounds on the afternoon for Malcolm Mackey of Georgia Tech. Barry Carter has been the big man for Ohio State. Carter averaging only 12 on the season. He's got 17 points thus far today. Should get Mackey involved, I think. Plenty of time on the shot clock, under 20. Anderson. 8 for 25 for Kenny Anderson. Skelton. Mackey. 19 rebounds for Mackey. for 26 for Kenny Anderson and a foul on Newbill. Foul number three on Newbill. Foul number 33, Ivano Newbill. Coming up next, it'll be Texas and St. John's. Tom Penders has never beaten Lou Carnesecca, although it'll be time number one for these two teams, these two schools meeting. Both squads. Looking to advance to the round of 16, Randy Ayers, Big Ten Coach of the Year, getting an outstanding game from Perry Carter, who has 17 points and 14 rebounds. Well, it's important now. Carter's got to be able to make some. He's going to get to the line frequently, and that's going to kill them at the end of this game. Under two to play, three points separating these squads. If I were Tech, I would consider switching up on Carter when he catches it, giving the foul. Don't have one of your big guys on him. Jamal Brown nearly with the steal. Oh, Anderson can't capitalize. And Randy Ayers is going to want to talk this one over. Everyone knows about my expansive vocabulary and the delineations I take with language. I went to electrocution school, so when I say the wrong thing at the right time, it's funny, but only because I'm in control. 
But if you're drinking and you start talking like me, then it's a good inclination that you're not in control. And that's not funny. You see, responsible drinking is as easy as knowing when to say the right thing at the right time. To know when to say when. And hey, even I could say that. A reminder from Budweiser. Now, United brings you the new World's Fair. Low fares to almost anywhere United and United Express fly. $69 to $159 to anywhere in the continental U.S. Hawaii from $149, plus great low fares to Europe and Asia. Buy your ticket by April 8th and travel between now and May 19th. Seats are limited and significant restrictions apply. So call your travel agent or United now for our new World's Fair. Come fly the friendly skies. If motorcycling has seemed out of reach, maybe you just haven't reached for the right motorcycle. Legendary inline four performance is now within your reach. Introducing the Nighthawk 750, only from Honda. When you're looking for mystery, you always start at the scene of the crime. Premieres Wednesday, April 3rd on CBS Late Night. It's too hot to sleep. in the NCAA tournament. This is the University of Dayton Arena. Second round action here in the Midwest. Ohio State with a three-point lead over Georgia Tech. 135 remaining. Vital stats, Bill. Well, timeout's important. Ohio State with the one left. Of course, Georgia Tech with the possession arrow. Georgia Tech came out with that trap, which was successful. Now they're back in man-to-man. -man. I would consider giving the foul to Carter. One way of stopping this Ohio State club. Statistically sound, you're right. Perry Carter, only two of his last 14 at the free throw line. Nice hedge. Brown for three. Treg Lee with the rebound. Number 12 for Treg Lee, but he loses it. Georgia Tech ball. Under a minute to play. Kenny's got to have poise here. Get set. Bobby calling the play. Grimmins, they're better when they run something. Tech trailing by three. 12 second difference between the game clock and the shot clock. See, they don't think inside first, they think perimeter, and it hurts in this kind of a situation. Anderson forces it. And Mark Baker, one of the offensive fouls, saying Kenny Anderson pushed it. And him. Five personal fouls if it's on Baker and he's out of there. The number three, Mark Baker. His fifth personal foul. So Baker, averaging 11 on the season, leaves with six points, but he had the responsibility of guarding Kenny Anderson, and statistically, he's done a good job as Anderson has been less than 40% from the field. He does attract attention. Uh, you've got to think, if he makes the two, what do you want to do? And obviously, Ohio State will Kenny try and keep Carter away from the basketball. But I would somehow entice him into a passing situation with some pressure, play everybody but him, and then give one. And Bobby Kremens calls a timeout to set up exactly that which you're trying to figure out. Today, one company will bring more people from more places together than anyone else. And there will be a little more laughing, a little more sharing, and maybe for a moment or two we'll all feel a little closer. AT&T, all you need to reach out. Extra strength Rolaids antacid. Stronger because it has more calcium carbonate, more than any Tums tablet, and salt-free. More calcium carbonate and salt-free. This settles it once and for all. Here's something for all you truck drivers to think about. There's an oil made special for trucks. An oil 
with the Shell brand. Oil that protects engines when they rev their highest and work their hardest. Think any oil will take care of your truck? Think again. Truck Guard from Shell. Kenny Anderson will be at the free throw line for Georgia Tech. Yellow Jackets trailing by two with 32.4 seconds remaining. One and one. And of course the possession hour important. But right now getting set on the free throw to organize into some sort of pressure. And he has hung tough despite not an easy flowing game. A lot of attention when he steps on the floor. Struggling from the field, but perfect at the free throw line. Nine of nine. Now I made the point that remarkably Georgia Tech has hung in despite a poor performance, but you made the point Ohio State. Well, the, the, the thing about them is they just are not as confident as they were earlier in the year. Not able to put people away. Might question himself after those late season losses. Anderson misses the second free throw, and it's still a two-point game. And Anderson fouls Jamal Brown. Kenny Anderson picks up foul number four with 30.2 seconds remaining. Now, Randy Ayer is not asleep over there. In that timeout, he, he got Perry Carter your man, out of the game. Body Beautiful said, come right over here, son. Boy, talk about staying on top of the game. Randy Ayer is a good bench tactician indeed. And now he's got him back in for the Rebounding obvious. purposes. Mm -hmm. Talk about and having prepared down well down for the head coaching responsibilities that Ayers has at Ohio State now. Three years under Eldon Miller, three under Gary Williams. Came in with his own system and his own head, and he's doing well. And he always compliments Gary Williams because what he did is he took some of his ideas, refined them, and put his personality into the team. And now he's got quickness in there. Treg Lee on the bench, Jamie Skelton in. Skelton at 6'2", 180, as Jamal Brown Hits the free throw to give the Buckeyes a three-point lead. Make it four. You're looking for a two-pointer now if you're Tech. No sense shooting the long one. Penetration by Kenny. Why not the long one? Well, you, it's a two-trip game, four points. Wow, there's the first two. Get the timeout. 18.8 seconds remaining. Back to a two-point game. Georgia Tech calls a timeout. What is the image of a rebel? These are the images of a rebel. Canon's revolutionary autofocus EOS Rebel. Image is everything. EOS Rebel from Canon. So advanced it's simple. Extra strength Rolaids antacid. Stronger because it has more calcium carbonate, more than any Tums tablet, and salt free. More calcium carbonate and salt free. This settles it once and for all. When it came to redefining the word luxury, it wasn't a Webster. It was Oldsmobile. The 98 defines luxury in terms of how much you get, not how much you spend. Anti lock brakes fuel-efficient power, computerized suspension, technology found in cars costing thousands more. And you can always take a Webster at his word. This is the, new the new 98. Luxury redefined. Generation bubbles. Great values, big prizes during Oldsmobile's drive to the Final Four Celathon. You can't miss. If your sporty car doesn't feel so sporty anymore, you need a change. By the team. The BF Goodrich Tire Team. They'll put on BF Goodrich T8 Performance Tires. Tires designed just for your sporty car. It's a whole new level of performance. Feel the difference. See your BF Goodrich Tire Team if they don't see you first. It's a major reunion. Have we met before? When Simon and Simon's Jameson Parker catches up with Gerald McCraney. You're a Marine. That's right. Great way to disguise hair loss. Makes it bad. Monday. 18.8 seconds to see who advances to the round of 16. Georgia Tech with no timeouts remaining. Possession arrow favors Georgia Tech. 
Bill, each foul from this point, a shooting situation. Well, it'll be a two-shot foul. Brandewee in the ball game, only a 62%, and more importantly, he's only played seven minutes a game. You'd ideally like a five-second violation here if you're tech. And a giveaway if... Uh, right away. Got to give it. Stop the clock one second. And Jim Jackson is the man who's fouled. He is a 77% free throw shooter on the season. So Randy Ayers had him set up to receive the inbounds pass. Georgia Tech foul, number 11, Brian Hill. As Perry and Carter and four. Jamie Skelton Jamie come back Kent. into the lineup, replacing Treg Lee and Brandewee. Jamie Skelton. Perry Carter back in the lineup for Ohio State. And Ayers has to be pleased because his team only 10 of 21 from the free throw line today. Jackson makes it a three-point lead. Now this one now changes it. On the make, it's a problem. You've got to rush down, look for the three. I think with 17, you don't have any timeouts left. Now it's a four-point lead. So Ohio State may give them the easy one. And Carter with a big rebound again. 8.9 seconds remaining. <laughs> Malcolm Mackey picks up his fourth personal foul. Perry Carter snatches his 18th rebound. free throw a bonus here for Carter with the four-point Buckeyes lead and he gets one <laughs> wow well Randy's got to be pretty happy even though he has the poker face yeah. Randy Ayers he's smiling inside with Carter having made that one in practice they wear catcher's mitts and what do you he know those free throws he gets the roll Hill for three and Georgia Tech cannot call. They get a technical. Out. Technical. The only way they can stop the clock. And eight tenths of a second remaining. Tech trailing by a three. Now you can get a shot off. But it may be a moot point with Jim Jackson at the free throw line. Well, don't forget. The two plus the ball. So I mean, they just have to. This one is history. And it is a moot point. It won't happen. This could be his last game. A lot of thrills for a lot of people if he so chooses to enter the NBA ranks. Because even in the end, the penetration trying to get the deuce. I think he, he was under the assumption they had another timeout. He's the one that called it, Kenny. Mm -hmm. But a great career if he moves on. And they brought in a point guard. Randwick trying to get on the scoreboard. So Ohio State moves on to the round of 16. A 65-61 victory over Georgia Tech. So for Bill Raftery, I'm James Brown saying so long from Dayton, Ohio. Let's take you back to New York. Jim Nance, Billy Packer, and Mike Francesca. All right, James Brown, thank you. And Ohio State now heads to the Silver Dome in Pontiac, Michigan for the Midwest Regionals. And we're going to head out now to four different sites. First, everyone's going to Atlanta for the start of the Wake Forest Alabama game. At 227, Penn State and Eastern Michigan will tip. Michigan State against Utah is a 235 tip Eastern time. That's a game that will take place in Tucson. And the Texas St. John's game is about a half hour away. We're going to send everybody for Wake Forest and Alabama. Of course, Georgetown UNLV is later in the afternoon. But Wake and Alabama coming up after this message and a word from your local station. There's a thread that runs through our lives. 
a thread that binds us together. Friendship, family, pride. These are the values that endure. The best things have always been those that last. Chevrolet, the truck that lasts. The heartbeat of America, Chevrolet, I helped my dad build this place. Well, help. <laughs> I was so small I could barely swing the hammer. But he taught me a lot about tools. He used to say, you can buy cheap tools every couple of years. Or you can buy Stanley once. Since 1843, a company from New Britain, Connecticut has been helping people do things right. Stanley. I even take my tape roll fishing. Well, that way I'll know how big a story to tell. Morning, folks. This is Captain Neely. It appears we've got the friendly skies all to ourselves. While well, most people are just getting up, one airline is off to over 200 business centers across the U.S. United. Thanks for flying friendly skies. 